All right, Slide Mania continues, but now with 50% Arnold. Because we have Escape Plan from 2013. This was conceived as an idea to put, to finally have Stallone and Schwarzenegger in the same movie together, starring in the same movie together. Yeah, they were in Expendables, Expendables 2, but Arnold wasn't really starring in that. He had a cameo in the first one, and he basically a cameo in the second one. A couple scenes here and there. They didn't really start anything together. So they put this together. And it uh, tells the story of Ray Breslin, a former lawyer who is now has a job escaping from prisons so that they can, so that he can then, you know, give his feedback and let them know what he did to escape and help fortify those prisons. Because due to an incident where he, uh, a person that he prosecuted, when he was a lawyer, escaped from prison and killed his wife and child. He now wants to make sure that never happens to anyone else ever again. So that's why he's doing this. And he gets a call uh, to, uh, in, you know, uh, to do a job with a uh, prison called The Tomb, which they cannot tell him where it is, uh, but they put a tracker in him. And they set him up to go in there. Uh, but then once he gets in there, he realizes something's not right. The warden's name is different than what he was told. Uh, it doesn't seem... He gives him an activation code or an eva evacuation code. And the guy doesn't seem to know what he's talking about. And so now he has to team up with another man named Emil Rottmeier. Rottmeier, Rottmeier, whatever. Played by Arnold Schwarzenegger to get out. So I remember seeing the trailer for this. I'm thinking, wow, Schwarzenegger and Stallone in a movie together. That looks pretty cool. And then I realized they hadn't really been starring in a movie together. This is something people have wanted for years. And yes, they were older. Yes, this should have happened 20 years earlier. But here's the thing. At this point... I think they're old enough, they're more mature enough that if this had happened in the, in the 90s, the, both of their egos would be like that the entire time, inches from exploding. Here, they're older, they've been in business longer, they know the ins and outs, they can work together. And that's why I think it works. Most of this film works on the principle that Stallone is supposed to have good chemistry. They're stuck in one place for most of the film. You do see some outside things where you find out that Breslin's business partner, Lester, Lester Clark, played by Vince Onofrio, is actually in on it. And because it uh, turns out that this prison, the tomb, was built using the book that Breslin wrote to, you know, and they made this secure prison on his notes, basically. Uh, you have the warden, played by Jim Caviezel, who is fantastic in this movie. Uh, he's sort of the villain. There's like three different villains. There's Jim Caviezel, there's uh, Visit Donofrio, who is sort of like an outside villain. We find out later in the film that he was going to become the new warden of this place, should this work. And that's why he was invested. And then you have Vinnie Jones playing the lead guard. Which, all the guards wear face masks. And it's really weird. But, I don't know. And there's one scene where, like, we see Vinnie Jones talking to Jim Caviezel. And the next scene you have this, this guy, this guard with a mask, talking with Vinnie Jones' voice. But the build of the guy, it's not Vinnie Jones. It's some guy overdubbed with Vinnie Jones' voice. Just saying. So Breslin, he's got to find a way to get out and to do that. He's got to get up to out of there somewhere, wherever it is, figure out where they are. And much like Face, oh, he gets up, he finds a way, the water starts leaking, which I don't understand this. So he's trying to climb out. There's an electric. Like, he grabs this thing and electricity comes out of it. And then water starts pouring. How does an electric... 
electricity failure then end up with water leaking everywhere. Water and electricity, they don't mix. Well, there's hydroelectricity, but I just, I don't know. And yes, I, it's revealed that they're on a boat, so that's where the water came from. But how does an electro, electric sparking institute water leak? I, I don't get the connection there. And he gets up, it's revealed he's on a ship. And um, in the middle of the ocean, uh, and, and then he uses this makeshift sext sextant to figure out that they're off the coast of Morocco. Uh, they try to include another uh, prisoner named Javed, and let's see if I can pronounce his name if he's on here. He's not on here. But he's the, he's the terrorist guy from Iron Man. The bald guy with the... Yeah, he's in that one. Uh, that guy. They, you know, convince him to help. That he's going to escape. Uh, but, of course, he's not Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone. So he dies because he can't escape. And that's the one thing watching this time I went. No, they killed him off. They didn't kill him off because, you know, it's a heroic sacrifice. No, they killed him off because he's not Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone. Only they can be the ones to escape. Sorry to say, but that's the way it was. And watching behind the scenes videos, I watched some videos on YouTube about this. And it seems like, yeah, this was a vehicle for Stallone and Schwarzenegger. And this guy is neither of them, so gets axed. There's some weird things, such as Jim Caviezel with butterflies. But I, from what I saw and heard, it was supposed to be like, oh, he paints these butterflies, he keeps them in little glass boxes, and now, you know, he's been doing that since he was a child, and now as an adult, he has humans in boxes. So, you know. I like the design of this prison, actually. It's very high tech. A lot of people would say, oh, you, there could never be a prison like this, but how do you know? I mean... Uh, Someone watches Face Off, and it's very similar to Face Off's prison. They can never do anything like that. How do you know? How do you know we don't have the technology to do this? You don't know what the government does. right? You don't know what kind of money the government has. They could have a facility like this. You just don't know it. Right? It's like the raft in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You don't know. It could be out there. You just don't know. I mean, this thing was disguised as a regular... Boat thing. So, yeah. Meanwhile, while, he, while Breslin is in there, uh, he's got his two uh, people, Hush, and his somewhat girlfriend, played by Hush, is played by 50 Cent, and his sort of girlfriend, played by Amy, Amy Ryan, who was the mom. In, on Goosebu in Goosebumps, the movie Goosebumps movie, that's where I know her from. Uh, I guess she gets replaced by Jamie King, who's actually like 10 years younger than Amy Ryan, so <clears throat> I don't know, but uh, we'll get that in the sequels, which just had to happen, I guess. So eventually, uh, so the whole thing with this Rottmeyer thing is that he has connections to someone named Victor Mannheim, which gets the, you know, peaked up, and, uh, D'Onofrio says you have to get information on him to Caviezel, and so they get out of there, they're able to escape, they meet on a beach, and the woman who hired Stallone is there, or Breslin is there, she's revealed to be Rottmeyer's daughter, and Rottmeyer is revealed to be Mannheim. It turns out that Portos, the name given to uh, Breslin when going in there, was a code word. And when they said it, that was the cue. When, when he heard the name Portos, that was the cue for Rottmeier, Mannheim, to make friends with him and get their way out of there. I'm not exactly sure what Mannheim does with the drug runner... I don't think he's a gun runner. I don't know exactly what he's about. But, you know, Jim Confucius explodes before he learns this. 
But I bet you he'd be kicking himself in the ass if he knew he had Mannheim there the entire fucking time. I'm just saying. And then we see that Vincent D'Onofrio is taken in his car to a shipping container, much like uh, um, Doctor Doom and the Fantastic at the end of the Fantastic Four movie, the good one. Yes, it's a good one. Uh, 2005 one, by the way. And, yeah, and then Breslin is left to do his own thing, I guess. And I guess he does continue, because there's two sequels. I've heard that possibly the second one is the worst one. Apparently that had the, the, the worst behind-the-scenes problems, I guess. I don't know, we'll see. But uh, I, thought this, I always thought this was a pretty good movie. Um, Sloan Sportsnager nailed it in this film. Uh, they have great chemistry. Vinny Jones is great. Caviezel is great as the villain. D'Onofrio, he's okay, but it's obvious there's something going on with him before they even reveal it. You know, to have these, you know, the, the side characters, I hope that, that, like, 50 Cent's character and the girlfriend character, that they do more. Also, does anyone else find it weird that he's doing this to avenge the death of his wife and child, yet how long ago did that happen? And how long did it take to him to move on to Amy Ryan? <laughs> like, can you move on to being in a relationship with someone else while also avenging your former relationship? You know, I always see in movies that, oh, you have to let go of your avenging mission so you can move on. But if he's somewhat in some kind of relationship with Amy Ryan... But he's still on this revenge mission. We're trying to make sure this doesn't happen. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's very weird to me. By the way, before I go, I want to say a thank you. Because last night at about a quarter to 2 a.m., so this morning, I got an email informing me, congratulating me on 100 subscribers. So I looked at it. I'm like, nah, that can't be right. 102 subscribers as of a quarter to 2 o'clock in the morning this morning. Uh, so I want to thank you. Thank you very much. I didn't think I'd ever get to 100. I know Big LT Radio got to 100. But, like, I never thought I'd make it to 100. So that alone is just fantastic. So thank you. Thank you very much for subscribing. Uh, those of you who haven't subscribed, please do. Like, share, and subscribe, of course. Uh, what are your thoughts? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I have to give a rating to this. It's it's an 8. 8 out of 10. I almost didn't give a rating. It's 8 out of 10. All right? This movie's 8 out of 10. I thought it's, it's pretty good. Uh, but, uh, yes. So, like, share, subscribe, and thank you for giving me to 100. Let's go for more, right? 150, 200. I'm not asking for a lot, you know? And I'm not one of those, like, smash that like button, baby, smash it. No. I just say... Like, share, and subscribe. Just, you know, a sincere like, share, and subscribe. I'm not forcing anybody to do anything. But I do thank you very much for getting me up to 100. This, uh, you tell how bad I am, Liz. You know, so uh, apparently I'm doing something right. So uh, thank you again. So what are your thoughts on Escape Plan? Leave me in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty. I'll see you in the next one.